Hi everyone, this is uh, Exer, and today we're going to talk about the counterparty block explorer exchange.io. So uh, the first thing you see when you arrive on exchange.io is the assets. And uh, these are the latest assets or NFTs created with the counterparty protocol. And see below it shows the time, asset name, asset description, total supply, if it's divisible or not, and if it's locked. So let's take an example. Let's take a look at the XCP Torch Unstoppable, and you'll see in the asset description there's an image link there. So we're just going to click View. Up top, you can see the latest DEX trade price. So that's the decentralized exchange uh, built into the counterparty protocol. Um, zero price, so it hasn't been traded yet. No market cap. Total supply of 10. This asset or NFT is divisible, and this um, NFT is locked. So only 10 will ever exist and no more can ever be added since the asset is locked. And below you'll see the picture of the, the world, the map. And that's the art associated with this NFT. I'm just going to click back here. And uh, we can actually check out, look at the more famous Rare Pepe uh, NFT or asset. Let's see if we can find that here. I'm just going to search through there. There's a lot of Pepe's. I believe there's like 15 or 1600 Pepe official Pepe uh, NFT, so um, it's pretty fun looking at all the different ones. So here it is, the famous rare Pepe created five years ago. So I'll click on that there, and there's the card right there. The one that started it all. Total supply of 300, it's not divisible, and it is locked. So since it's not divisible, um, it can't be sent in Satoshis. It just only can be sent in whole numbers. So the total supply is 300, so only a total of 300 people uh, will ever be able to own this NFT. And right now you can see the market cap is $3.4 million. And the latest DEX trade price is $11,333.33. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, probably a year ago or two years ago, you could probably pick up this card for four or $500. And lately they've been selling for uh, 16, 17,000. So uh, that's quite a return on investment. We'll go back here. Um, bets, we're gonna ignore that. Broadcast, we're going to ignore. We just want to do a real quick overview. Burns, we're going to ignore that. Uh, dispensers, so dispensers are pretty cool. They're virtual vending machines for counterparty. And uh, what it is is people will put a card inside or multiple cards or multiple packs inside these vending machines. And I'll show you how to create these at a later time. And what you can do is just click, click view. And you can see right here this uh, block size CD card. It's a very old card. Um, it's for sale for looks to be about two Bitcoin or 100, 120,000. Let's just say it's 60,000 BTC. Uh, there's one to give. And if you send 120,000 or two Bitcoin to this address right here, um, it's going to shoot you back this card right here. I wouldn't pay $120,000 for it. Uh, maybe someone will eventually, but not me. Very cool. There's 300 of these cards total. It's locked. And if we look at issuances, it's six years old. So uh, it's definitely one of the earliest NFTs ever. Um, I don't know if it's in the top 40. probably is, but uh, I don't know that. Just click on dispensers again. And you can see some more affordable options. These are all fairly expensive. You can see the price right there on the right-hand side. Genesis card, that's a, an amazing piece of history right there for the NFT. Uh, it's expensive also, about $8,000 it looks. And uh, there's a thousand of these. True, true. If you want to see uh, who the holders are, you can click this button right here, holders. You can see 443 of them have burned. So those are uh, sent to an unspendable uh, Bitcoin address that no one has the key or passphrase to. So those cards are locked away forever. So you can take that 443 away from the total supply. And uh, that leaves you with, uh, let's say, uh, five, five. 57 I think so there's 557 available and then you can see the next biggest holder on 16.9 of those and Say you wanted to explore that address you can click that address there and you can see what cards they hold You can click debits right here. You can see when they last sent a last card So they haven't had any activity in four years in this particular wallet address But in the last 13 days they opened an order um, to sell the Satoshi card. So um, Looks like they're back. You can see what credits people have received in their wallets here Let's just click back here again. We'll go back to dispensers and just take another little look. See if we can find something a little more affordable. 
see, this is pretty affordable. Um, Pepe a free keck. I don't know if I'm saying that right. There's six. There's one. So each time you send zero point zero zero one one nine 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 Bitcoin to this address right here, uh, this dispenser is going to kick it back to you. You can see that it's open. If it says closed, don't send any Bitcoin to that address because you're not going to get any cards. There's 16 available. On uh, let's take a look at the card. 250. It's a nice card. So um, the last price on the decks was two dollars and four cents, but I'm guessing one hasn't been sold on the decks in a while. You can look at the open orders. The last time an order was available on the decks for this particular card was over a year ago, and it was for 732 uh, Pepe Cash. Or that's actually what they were buying. So um, three years ago, you could have bought one for 250 Pepe Cash, and now it looks like based on the dispenser price, um, we're probably around $70 or so. I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, dividends don't we don't even pay much attention to that issuances uh, pretty much the same as the assets they display the same the same data fairly well we can jump into that in uh, another another time markets uh, these are different markets that are up on the decks um, all these I don't know how accurate all these are right here uh, you can't sort by the ask so um, you can see by the ask right here and you're seeing the different current ask. If it says zero or zero bid, it means there's no current ask or bid on this particular card yet. Orders. This is where you can see the latest orders on the decks. And there's a bunch of activity lately on the decks, which is cool. Um, you can see right here, uh, this person is selling one Fry Pepe for 400 XCP. Uh, XCP right here is the USD price of $3.40. So you're probably looking around $1,400, $1,500 for that card. Very cool card. Um, there's a supply of 500, so it may be a little high. I think that price is a bit high, but you might want to check the holders. 30, 21, 16. Let's see when they sent their last cards out. A year ago. So, yeah, I think that's a little high for this card right now. I, I probably, I probably wouldn't buy that card for 500 XCP, but there might be someone else out here who. Uh, who may want it really bad, and uh, they may pay the 400 XCP. Sends. So these are the latest sends on the counterparty protocol, and these are the sends that confirmed. So you can see which sends are being sent where. Um, looks like someone burned a Pepe right here, 90 of them, which is pretty brave of them. I don't know how many how many are there. There's only 70. There's only 100. So wow, that's a big burn. They just burned 90% of the supply. What a shame. All right, and unconfirmed. So what you have right here is these are orders that are processing um, that haven't been confirmed on the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, you can see right here, this is actually one of my orders. I bought 21 Pepeon Musk for 2.1 XCP. So it cost me about 30 cents per Pepeon Musk, I believe. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. And then I bought these other, these uh, Pepe AMD ones, pretty cool. 7,950 of them. They're locked, so I'm going to spend too much on those. Uh, I spent about $18, so about a dollar a piece. That was a pretty good deal. And then you can see the other orders coming up. So um, for you to really get the feel of uh, all the original NFTs and, and what's going on in Counterparty and the movements and everything like that, visit xchain.io and just explore all the different cards. It's, uh, it's quite a cool place to look at. Uh, the shitcoin card, this is definitely... Uh, an all-time favorite of mine and a lot of other people in Rare Pepe. I uh, see right now has a market cap of almost a million dollars. Last traded dex price was three hundred nine dollars. There's three thousand of them, so there's a bunch of there's a bunch of them. Um, this one holds seven hundred and ten of them. No burns. I don't see any burn addresses there. We can see what debits. Two years ago, so this person hasn't debited from their wallet in over two years. So, um, do they have their key? Do they not have their key? I don't know. That's part of the fun of of trading counterparty assets. So maybe they'll come back again. And flood the market but either way this is a series one card it's one of the first ever uh, I think $300 is definitely a fair price so if you want to look at Pepe's or no matter what you want to look at you can just use the search bar up top and you can just put in Pepe on X chain and you'll see all the different 
Pepe's come up. 351 uh, assets come up or NFTs with the name Pepe. You see the photos. You can browse them. There's Barry Pepe. Where's Barry Pepe? There he is. Barry. Um, 21 of these are, you know, it's pretty, pretty, uh, it's locked. I think one just sold for $1,600 at auction. White Rabbit grabbed it. Uh, this card is, I would definitely say, worth way more than $1,600. So that was a great pickup by, uh, by White Rabbit. You know, this is probably a, a, easily a, a five ten thousand dollar card. I would think, um, if not right now, I don't know. This is an investment advice, but maybe in the future, uh, maybe three months, six months from now, uh, I could see this card going for ten ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars, no problem. So if you really want to learn about Counterparty and just get a feel for the cards. Um, check out xchain.io. This is Counterparty Block Explorer. In the next lessons, you know, we'll we'll go more in depth about this and uh, explain more about xchain.io and uh, everything you see on this page. But it's a great spot to start if you're interested in starting to collect NFTs and if you want to collect the original NFTs on Bitcoin. Uh, Counterparty is a place to be, and xchain.io is definitely your spot to start um, start learning. So, uh, you know, as Ethereum gets Filled with all these new NFTs daily, thousands and thousands and thousands and tens of thousands soon, and hundreds of thousands. Um, these originals on on Counterparty are just going to continue to increase in value, in my opinion. And um, it's not even really about the the value of the card; it's more about you know owning a piece of history for for me. So that's that's very cool. But the, my bullish sentiment on Counterparty assets is uh, very high, so um, I think it's a good place for for you to start anyway. So. Uh, thank you for checking out the UOCP.org video on X-Chain, and we'll jump more in depth, and hopefully I'll be able to make it a little more exciting for you guys, but uh, just a quick overview on how X-Chain.io and the, and the counterparty uh, network and how the how the NFTs exist inside the network and discover all the amazing different cards of uh, Rare Pepe, uh, Spells of Genesis, Force of Will, and uh, so many more. So thanks, guys.